Something draws us to the cosmos, to outer space, whether it be NASA's James Webb Telescope. Unless you believe that's a conspiracy theory and all lies like the lunar landing, but I digress. So we turn to video games to experience the infinite cosmos. Because let's face it, you know, we're not all Elon Musk. We can't just build our own spaceships. So we turn to it, and where do we look? We look and we see no man's sky. Quantrillions of kabillions of planets and solar systems. And we just want to go, so we turn it on and we overlook the cartoony BS, you know, art style of it all. And we land, and for the first few hours, we are blown away by the procedural generation and this enormous variety. And then we realize it's all just an illusion. All the planets, all the quintillions of planets look exactly the same once you've seen a couple of dozen of them. So we quickly tire of it after a few days and we move on. We want more. So we look to Elite Dangerous, one of the games with uh, the most, uh, you know, original names in history. And we jump into it and we're like, okay, the graphics are a little better. Not photorealistic or anything, but they're better. They're not a cartoon. The combat is excellent. The economy's okay. It's not a real, truly simulated economy, but hey, sure beats No Man's Sky. But then we quickly realize we can't get up and take a look at our ships. We can't interact with our ships. Well, what's the point in having these big fancy ships? What's the point in, in doing the whole, ugh, I hate the word, grind? What's the point in grinding for days or weeks to buy a super fancy ship that you can't even get up and take a look at or interact with? And then we realize all the planets are just dead rocks with little thin atmospheres and there's nothing, oh, forget this. So we turn off Elite Dangerous. We look to the next space game. The perfect, searching for the, the perfect space game that we deserve, you know, as all first worlders believe. And we come across X Universe, X4, let's say. One of the most realistically simulated economies on planet Earth for gamers. Space gamers. We jump in and we're blown away by the economy simulation. We're so overwhelmed in the best of ways. We look out and we find that we can walk around on our ships, well, at least in a limited way. We can fly anything. We can control anything. It's Im it's like <laughs> it's like the god of all space games. The graphics are okay. You can get by, you know, because there's so many, so much complexity to the game. You can overlook the, you know, the okay graphics. And we look to the worlds in the game and we say, wow. And then we realize we can't descend on the worlds. We can't explore the worlds. The worlds are just backdrops. We have the economy. We have the fact that we can fly anything. The graphics are okay, but we can't visit the damn worlds. I didn't mean to say a curse word. I meant damn as in holding up water. So quickly we tire of the X4 universe. We crave, we can, we can make compromises. We, we can drop some of the economy. A lot of the economy. We can drop, I don't know, we compromise and we compromise and we say, you know what, I want photorealism. I want to be able to land on a planet, explore it, go wherever I want, walk around in my ship. So we turn to Star Citizen. And we're happy. We can't believe the complexity. It's not just a space game. It's a space simulator. We can walk around our ships. We can interact with our ships. We can leave our ships in EVA. We can descend on the planet any point we want. There's nothing to do, but hey, we can do it. It looks visually striking. It's beautiful. But quickly we realize it's an empty alpha husk of a game. There's no depth whatsoever. There's some PvP. If you're an explorer like me, you don't give a damn about PvP. You just want to explore, you want to take in the beauty, you want the, the, to be immersed in outer space in these worlds. So we look to the next game. Oh, plus don't even get me started on the um, development cycle after 10 years. We live and die waiting for some games to be finished. So we look to the future, the near future, to September with the release of the perfect space game, Starfield. We see Starfield in the promise of Bethesda, and we, we know damn well that Bethesda promises are 100% accurate. There's never any <coughs> bugs or anything like that. Perfect, perfect space game Starfield coming in September. We watch the interviews of Todd Howard and we see, <gasps> wait, what did he just say? Landing on and taking off from planets are cutscenes? 
But we don't want cutscenes. We want to land on planets. We want to take off manually. Fly our ship in atmosphere. And what's that Todd Howard said? Exploration is different in Starfield? You only explore regions around your ship where you land? Sounds an awful lot like limited maps. Sounds like you can't take off across the horizon on your feet and explore the whole world. Only sections around your ship. Hmm. No land vehicles. No, no vehicles, vehicles to traverse. The planets seem to support the theory that we're going to have limited maps around our ship. Well, that's no fun. We'll have all the immersion of a Bethesda game, of a Skyrim in space. We'll have NPCs that don't stand on tables. We'll have fully interactive cities. It's a true RPG. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But it has limitations. It is not the perfect space game. So, I beg you to consider. Do we consider? Do we consider? <laughs> I can't even speak because I'm so stupefied by what we have in our space game arsenal. <laughs> I'm not losing my mind. Do we deserve a perfect space game? Hell no. We don't deserve anything. We're just worthless gamers. So let's just enjoy the arsenal of space games that we have and dream of a future where our expectations are lowered so that we might enjoy the genre we so desire.